Since 2016, I've had the privilege to explore and document one of the most intriguing hauntings in the state of Indiana, Franklin's very own Candlelight House. This home built in 1868 was the family farm of John and Mary Owens. John died before completion of the house, but it became home to his widow, Mary, and children, George, Margaret, John, Minor, Catherine, Jane, Samuel, James, and William. Wow. It is through the lineage of William Owens and his wife Cordelia that the Candlelight House stayed in the Owens family for decades. It was through their daughter, Mary Pritchard, who in 1909 gave birth to her son, Otho Henry Pritchard. He would be the last descendant of the Owens family to live in that house. Otho passed away in 1995. It's through the current owners that I've been able to access this location. Since they purchased the home in 2014 and started work on saving the structure, they've experienced many anomalous occurrences, including the spirit of Otho seemingly writing his name on a window pane. My main goal in having this Parahollis YouTube channel is not to be a run-of-the-mill paranormal content creator for thrills and entertainment, but as a means to provide a sounding board through all the para-nonsense out there, and more importantly, document the various strange experiences and weird tales I encounter in my paranormal research in hopes that one day when I'm gone, this information will remain for investigators for years to come. Hopefully to use as a resource for future investigators to build upon, and as technology and methodologies improve, the questions that endure regarding these locations might begin to unravel and unpack the cause or purpose behind hauntings. From my previous investigations of the Candlelight House, I have noticed certain reoccurring themes that have stayed consistent in my experiments. This video is my attempt to harvest most of the interesting moments to date. As I continue to hopefully have future opportunities to visit, my plan is to try to flesh out as much information on these topics since they seem relevant to the Candlelight House, including intelligent replies noting the names of relatives of the Owens family, the nickname of the house, Anything pertaining to Otho Henry Pritchard and his staying behind in the home, Otho's interest in food, candy, and eating, then a general sense of anger towards me specifically, for which my theories vary, and I'll get to that later. Please note, most responses are heard upon review and not in real time. Changes in the video's filter visually mark the replies that were the most significant. Those various audio responses have been enhanced, repeated, and sometimes slowed down. As always, we do not offer this video as irrefutable evidence of the paranormal, nor do we claim our annotations are 100% conclusive. All we're asking is that you please approach the data presented here with a curious mind, and that you wear damn headphones. My first visit to the Candlelight House was when I was doing a podcast under the moniker Evil Ogleville with comedian Jeff Bodart called Kinda Makes You Think. The homeowners, Adam and Ella, sent us an email about their experiences with the house and invited us to check it out. We recorded some Class A EVPs and some interesting ITC responses, as well as experienced shadows and unexplainable bangs and thuds. The candlelight house was really intense and seemed very much alive that day. You can see our visit in its entirety in my video, Ghost of the Candlelight House and I'll put the link below.
Could you come in and talk to us and tell us your name? Are you in the hallway? Come in here and listen to the music with us. Spirit box session. Dark room upstairs. PRD 1000. Would you like visitors again? Mike. Say Mike. Does that make it easier? What city are we in? What's your name? Can you, can you tell us your ABCs? I'll start off. A, B, C, D. I heard it saying A, B, C, D, E, F. Can you count to ten? <laughs> Almost sound like it's counting. On a return visit to the Candlelight House, I had recently gotten a new ghost box, and I was trying to put together some B-roll footage for a different little video I was working on at that time. Adam and Ella were gracious enough to let me visit to do some filming. It was when I turned on my new box that I felt like the house started airing out some grievances towards me. See, after my initial visit and video came out on YouTube, it generated a lot of stir and I think the house was getting more attention than it was comfortable with. Everything from vandals breaking in to some drama generated with locals who knew Otho, arguing some of the explicit words caught on the video couldn't have come from the original family because they didn't use language like that and it was perceived as disrespectful to them in some way. And I get that. Unfortunately, with ITC work or instrumental transcommunication, there's no way to have like controls or set parameters on who it is you're totally communicating with at any given location. So to conclude that we were only in communication with the Owens family or their descendants would be deceptive because no one knows who could have been passing by that night and chose to come through a particular device to give some nonsensical or hateful sounding response. No claims were ever made that we were speaking to anyone directly associated with Owen's family, and that's just a glimpse into the frustration I face when it comes to these types of experiments, not totally being able to verify who it is you're talking to. So based on the feedback I received directly from the house on my Voices of the Candlelight House video, the house was unhappy with me too. 
and I'll put the link to that video below as well. What's the name of this house? Who am I talking to? Do you remember my name? This is from The Hauntings of the Candlelight House, a subsequent visit during which we caught some powerful EVPs and I'm also including some never-before-seen footage from a PRD-1000 Andy's Ghost Box session that we did in Otho's Kitchen. And I will put the link to that video below. They said you used to use it to make your breakfast. Kept your oatmeal in it. Do you eat oatmeal every day for breakfast? Would you come in here, please? I uh, thank you. See that light up? Oh, yeah. Hello. The periscope. Oh, yeah. Are you standing over there? so much. Who made those lights light up over there on that uh, little device? Can you come do that again? Who lives in this house?
Are you happy? Why do you stay here in this house? Lastly, I was approached by Indianapolis TV station RTV6 to do a story on ghost hunting for Halloween. So one of the reporters, Mandy Walker, came down. We brought her to the Candlelight House and hung out there for an afternoon. I think the most clear and conversational exchanges occurred that day. And guess what? I will put the link below. What's Adam call me? Is there anyone downstairs? Who's in the 
the cellar. Is there anybody upstairs? Who's up there? Okay, maybe they're not married, maybe they are, uh, just, you know, heat of the moment. What's the name of Adam's wife? Uh, do you have a message for anyone? stuck here. Oh, e. 
any of our names. So many remaining questions seem to be mounting about the Candlelight House. Like, what are the voices telling us concerning the cellar area of the house? We may have caught more clues to this in my 2018 Halloween live stream. Was there an accident that occurred down there? Or is it a place that hides a secret tragedy? And the animosity towards me, which actually isn't exclusive to the Candlelight House, but seems to happen to me everywhere I go. As I've moved from location to location and have established a contact field that networks with various entities I've encountered, I've documented this building frustration towards the sentiment that I'm dropping the ball, like they have some sort of expectation of me. What do they need? What sort of obligation do I have, if any, when I've encountered these beings? What can I do to assist them that doesn't feel like some woo-woo hocus-pocus? Is crossing over spirits a placebo effect? A placebo for the living and possibly for the spirits as well? Do these entities understand that they've previously died? Or are they just in some state of confusion? Are there various levels of spirit evolution that these beings must undertake and it takes time for them to unlock whatever binds them? Can higher, more developed spirits help them? Are we able to assist with this process in any capacity? These are all the things I'm currently exploring and considering various possibilities in my research.